Hello everyone, Linda Hayes here, coming from beautiful Belize with another Lessons Learned in Belize Part 2. So some of the dis items I already discussed in my first video were the fact that realtors in Belize do not need to be licensed and there's no true MLS system. Now, you might hear that there is an MLS system here, but if you go into it and you compare to all the agents that have listings as you drive around the island, you'll find that this only has some agents on it, so it's not an MLS system like we're used to seeing by any stretch of the imagination. Usually, there's also no traditional bank financing, and even though there's solar financing, it can be hard to find. In addition, building a brand new house like I'm doing here on the island, uh, in fact, I'm building two new tiny homes, it requires a lot more work than building homes in Edmonton. And the same with acquiring furniture and decor. And another thing I find from being on the island when people come in and talk about the prices, costs are a lot higher than many people may expect. So if you want to see that full 20 minute video, you can go on to the link here. So what I'm going to discuss today, I'm going to cover property management and challenges, Airbnb and why it may not be possible, I'm going to talk about variable pricing, occupancy rates and rental returns, and some zoning talk as well. So the first thing is that if you want to rent out your property in Belize, you need to have a license and you may need to establish a company for your rental business. I didn't expect to have to do a company, although I know I needed a license, but when I went to the bank to open a bank account to be able to pay my bills, I was not able to do that. So they recommended setting up the company so that I could then open the rental business. And that has a lot of extra costs that I wasn't expecting. Another thing is if you decide to hire a manager, ensure you ask for referrals and look for online reviews. Another difference here is that hosts provide a lot more services than in Canada and the US. For example, airport transfers, check in and check out. When I came to Ambergris Key, my taxi was paid for to get to the yacht club where I was staying. And I think that's quite important because there aren't actually physical addresses on the property here on the island. So it'd be very hard for someone to find your property if you didn't have uh, transportation available for them. So self-management is much more difficult and I wouldn't do it if I wasn't on site. So now I'm going to give some quotes on, from an article by Rachel Jensen, which she's with ECI and the article is called What You Should Know About Property Management in Belize. So if you're buying in a complex or a building with a homeowners association, you'll need to make sure you're able to rent it out. And if so, if you can rent it out on your own, don't be surprised or upset if they don't allow it. So many branded hotels have a maximum use clause and some allow you to opt out of the program. But just because you can opt out of their program, it doesn't mean you can rent it out on your own as a short-term rental. So in Canmore, as an example, where I have a friend who has properties in condo hotels, if she is not in the rental pool with the building, she can have her property on Airbnb. And that is off. That is not the case here on the island. So the Best Western is an example on Ambergris Key. And they have a six week rule. You're allowed to stay in your property for up to six weeks unless you pay for it, but you can opt out of the rental program entirely if you want to live in your unit, which is great because they're, they have really nice condos, which a lot of people live in. Now, if you decide to opt out of the rental program and then sometimes you're not in your condo, you can only rent to long-term tenants, not on the short-term market. So it's great that this, the developer discloses this, but don't assume everyone does. So it's very critical to find out if you aren't in the rental pool, are you allowed to rent it out on your own? So you may want to, you may think, hey, I like the Best Western for this period of time that I'm not there, but I don't like it the rest of the time. Well, you're not allowed to go back and forth. You pick one or the other. So I didn't find out that a development could have only one license until I was on the Real Estate Guys Discovery Tour. So that kind of is a huge issue if you were buying, say you buy a condo in a development and you think that you don't have to be part of the rental pool because you find that out and then you find out, wait a sec though, you can't get your own hotel license. So that could be a huge problem with your ROI plan. And um, I've talked to many different property managers here on the island. For example, one that I stayed at, she was saying that 
yeah, they have one rental pool for all of the owners and there's very specific rules and no one's allowed to have anything on Airbnb. The rental pool themselves, of course, they, they're able to be on Airbnb and that one is, but if you don't like the way they're doing it or how they're doing their pricing or their management, there's really nothing you can do about it if you want to rent it out. Another quote from the same article, in Belize, reliability can be an issue. It's common for someone to offer their help and then not perform. It's a good idea to have a few helpers on speed dial. That said, if you plan on being on site or in the area full time, self management can, could be an appealing option. So variable pricing is kind of a thing I noticed that wasn't in uh, Belize very often. So many airlines and hotels now use variable pricing, whereas in the past prices were mostly static. So we had rate cards at hotels, vacation pricing was printed in catalogs, but when we got to Ambergris Key on did the tour on the island with the Real Estate Guys Radio, one condo actually mentioned that they used variable pricing, whereas others do not. So you'll find that that one condo does, and so does the Hilton, of course, and the Best Western, but most people don't use that here. Now, if you don't change your price when demand's down, it does affect your occupancy rates. And if you buy something where you don't have control of this, obviously you could have a way less occupancy rate than what you think you should be able to have. I use a software called Price Labs for my property in Canada, and despite COVID, I've had about 80 to 90% occupancy in all my Airbnb properties in Edmonton. And the key is, is if you market the price um, to be what people want to pay, it's a lot easier to get bookings. Not always the case, obviously, depending where you are, but certainly variable pricing can help a lot. So in terms of figuring out occupancy rates, which feed into your rental returns, Dennis Kay, who is a realtor, has a great YouTube video that I'm sharing here, and he shows ways to find occupancy rates similar to the way I do it when I'm doing my own performance. He also gives an example of a condo versus a land purchase from an ROI perspective. So performers are a key if you're looking for ROI. So if your salesperson won't help you with one, it could be a red flag. So I met a couple recently on the island who said they're buying a condo and they had a great realtor that showed them many different properties, not just their own listings, which is uh, which is really great because I've heard a lot of people complain about that. And in their case, they're not really concerned with making a huge profit. They're more looking for appreciation of the condo over time. So they weren't too worried about cash flow. But I still suggested they ask if the owner of the condo would be willing to share their past owner's statement. And if you are able to get any kind of pro forma, make sure you look before you leap and verify all of the assumptions. Lots of times I see budgets that just don't make sense to me, but at least they're a good starting point. Next topic I wanted to cover is zoning. So for my properties in Edmonton, I know that a bar couldn't just open up beside my residential property because I can check the zoning on a specific lot because the city of Edmonton has a website to do this. So many areas, do have specific rules on what type of property can be beside it and what finishing is required. Now, in Belize, that's often not the case. So you have to check to see if the area you're buying in has any kind of approval process required. So in Mahogany Bay, where I bought, for example, there are there is a whole land plan where there's commercial lots at the front and then the residential. And then at the end, there's some possibility to be both residential and commercial. And if you don't know, like if you don't own all the land in one area, you really have no idea what's going to go next to you. And if you buy your you know you build your dream home and you end up with a really loud bar next door that might not be what you planned for also there's examples i've heard of properties that people tout as having ocean view when they're selling them but if there is someone else that owns the land in front of the ocean that might not always be the case so just because it has ocean view today unless it's right on the ocean you don't know that that view won't change down the road if the owner decides to build something higher than what you've built and i've actually seen examples of this happen where uh, people have um, definitely have plans to build things that will block ocean views of people that own already and uh, who knows what they were told when they bought but obviously if you have ocean view today and you're not going to it certainly would affect your property value 
So now I want to give some tips of things that we found here that might be a little bit different. So Facebook is used for almost everything here, including business. So when we first came into town and we were looking for an affordable rental, we really couldn't find it on the internet easily. And we got a referral from a realtor. And then later on, when I found out about how much Facebook was used, I was actually able to find something even more affordable. We have a really nice one bedroom, more modern apartment with laundry, full kitchen and everything. And it's only 650 US to rent it plus electricity. So really, really great deal. And if we were not on Facebook, we would not have found that. And we also even found our doctor through Facebook and the doctor is from the US. It's a very affordable clinic to go to. And it's also very modern, which was something I didn't actually expect being in a developing country. So that was a very nice thing as well. So next I want to talk about shipping. I knew it was very expensive to ship things in terms of shipping costs as well as duty bringing things onto the island. And from a book I read called The Easy Belize, I found out that hide shipping was an option and I did use them successfully for getting some things for the tiny home that I'm building. But then I did also want to order things from Amazon if possible. And I actually found a different shipping company through some bar owners that we met uh, that are from the US and what they said they liked to about this other shipping company is that it's a little more affordable and they also have an app to track the shipments which I really like. So what I do now is I order things we can't get on the island through Amazon. It's put into the office in Houston um, that I'm using and then they consolidate all my Amazon into a big box and oftentimes it'll cost me around $50 US and I get a whole uh, thing of groceries. Last month I even ordered a new coffee pot because my local hardware store had really small ones. We wanted a bit of, of a bigger one so so we went ahead and got that along with a lot of the groceries that we like to get. And there's another cool thing that we have, uh, a website called Belize Grub, and I found this from our doctor actually. And this is something that's useful to show to your guests if you do have an Airbnb property. Since we don't have skip the dishes and things like that here, Belize Grub actually allows you your guests to see where they can get delivery. And for us, we use this ourselves when we don't feel like cooking and we don't really wanna go out either. Like right now outside it's raining. And so if we wanted to order food in, we know where we can get it from, which is very useful. So finally, I just wanna talk about a couple other resources. So the real estate guys have another upcoming Belize Discovery Tour. It's running April 16th to 19th because the one I went to in January actually sold out. So I know they had a waiting list of other people that are going to be attending this one. And it's very useful to get a whole range of different types of properties you can get across the island. And then I also included a webinar that ECI Development put out on mistakes we make when we buy property overseas. International investing is very different than investing in our local markets, which I've been doing in Canada since 2006. But for international, it is quite different. And the more resources we can find, the better. So I'm happy to help you with finding other resources than what you can maybe commonly find on Google. You can also subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my progress on my tiny homes. And you can also see a lot of updates on my newsletters and my website is listed here. It's albylrealestate.com. And I hope I've given you some useful things to think of. Thank you.